It's time, I tell you today, it is time for us to get up and at it. Are you up and at it for the Lord is what I ask you today. When I hear that phrase, I think of one person. I think of my dad. And I know some of y'all gonna say, boy, you think about your dad a lot. Yeah, I do. That, that man, he, he lives rent free in my head, as they would say. I can hear my dad now yelling upstairs to me and my brother early on a Saturday or on a Sunday morning. It's time to get up and at it. In other words, it was time to move. It wasn't time to just keep on laying in bed. All right. It was time to get up yeah. and at it. Yeah. Um, now, what's funny about this is that I remember him doing this after I could hear him moving around downstairs, opening and closing and shutting cabinets. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, he used to do this very loudly yeah. to try and get me and my brother up and at it. Now, he would never admit to it, but I believe that's what he was doing. Now, honestly, when I was little, I couldn't stand and hear him then yell upstairs after doing that, mm -hmm. that it was time to get up and at it. Like any other person, what I wanted to do on a Saturday or on a Sunday was lay in bed for just a little bit. All right. All right. But staying in bed all day was simply not something that my old man it was not something that my dad would allow for me and my brother to do. As I told y'all not too long ago, my dad was not a big fan of anything that appeared to be a sign of laziness. Mm -hmm. He did not believe in staying in bed all day long. All right. So when I read this fifth chapter of Judd's gospel, I hear the Lord saying to the world that it is time to get up and at it. I believe here in this passage of scripture that we see a microcosm of our world. Mm -hmm. And not only do we see that, I also believe that we see the purpose for Jesus's ministry. We will see here in this chapter of John's gospel that Jesus tells all of us who choose to genuinely follow after him. He tells us to rise, to take up our beds and to walk key word there, walk. Yes, yes. Now, when Jesus tells us to rise, I believe we ought to stand up immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he tells us to walk, I believe we ought to do so without hesitation. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to ask you this question today. Are you up and at it? Specifically, okay. are you up and at it for the Lord today? Mm -hmm. If you are not up and at it, I want to ask you, why aren't you up and at it? Why are you not walking for the Lord today? Right. Why are you still laying in bed? Why are you still laying down? Mm -hmm. This is what I want you to consider today as we move through my message for today. Here in the opening of the fifth chapter of John's gospel, we are introduced to a certain man. All right. We are told that this certain man, he had an infirmity for 38 years. Yes, yes. We see him here lying at the pool of Bethesda along with a great multitude, we are told, right. of others who were sick, who were blind, who were lame, and who were paralyzed. Mm -hmm. We see that there in the third verse. All right. These were impotent ones. Mm -hmm. Now, why were all these impotent ones at the pool of Bethesda? Well, we get our answer here in scripture. Mm -hmm. We are told that it was believed that the pool of Bethesda had healing powers. Yeah. The saying was that an angel would come down at a certain time into the pool and that the angel would stir up the water. All right. And whoever was first into the pool at that moment, the waters were stirred would be made well. Yes, yes. So this man who it was believed was unable to walk along with all of the other impotent ones of the great multitude would wait by the pool. They would wait by looking at the waters, waiting for the waters to be stirred up mm -hmm. 
so that they could try to rush to get into the pool of water and be healed. Now, while these people may have been impotent, let us consider that they were also important, Mm -hmm. especially this one certain man. Mm -hmm. I say this because we see here in scripture that Jesus made his way to the pool of Bethesda. I don't believe that it was coincidence for Jesus to have been going to the pool. I don't think that Jesus was going to this pool because he needed healing. Mm -hmm. He certainly did not need to go to the pool because of his perceived healing powers. Again, Jesus did not need any healing. No, Jesus, I tell you that he was there for a specific reason. Jesus was there for all of those impotent ones. Mm -hmm. He was there, especially for this certain man. Now, when Jesus arrived at the pool, Mm -hmm. we see that he saw this certain man laying at the pool of Bethesda. And we see there in the sixth verse, that Jesus had a question for this certain man. He asked this man, do you want to be made well? Now the King James version, if you happen to be looking at it in a King James Mm -hmm. translation, you see that the word well does not appear there. That's right. The word whole is in its place. That's right. That's so again, Jesus was asking this man, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? Tell it. Tell it. There's a, a difference there wow. that I want you to understand that we'll see here in my sermon yeah. today. Now, this was a very interesting question for Jesus to be asking this man, right? Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you that this is a microcosm of our world, that it is representative of something. Mm -hmm. And it is also, uh, it shows us the purpose behind the ministry of Jesus as Mm -hmm. well. What I want us to do here for a moment is I want us to consider that great multitude that was laying by the pool. Mm -hmm. I want us to consider that it is representative of something. Yes, Lord. I believe that that great multitude of impotent ones, I believe that they were representative. They are representative of mankind. Mm-hmm. They are representative of mankind in the world back then and mankind that is of the world today. They are representative of mankind, which is sick. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand that I'm not talking about those who are physically sick, those who are physically stricken with disease, Mm -hmm. talking about all of us who are sick in sin. And they are representative of not only all of those who are sick in sin, but all those who are waiting to be healed of their sins. I tell you today that there are many still in our world that are waiting at the pool of Bethesda, whether they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. They are waiting there at the pool of Bethesda, waiting to be lifted up and waiting to be healed. I'm preaching from the fifth chapter of John's gospel, Sister Orton. Mm -hmm. Some that are waiting at the pool of Bethesda, they are waiting for a sign from heaven. Some are waiting for a great feeling or emotion to pass over them that will magically lift them up, Mm -hmm. that will magically heal them. Others are waiting for something big to pop up in their lives. They're waiting for something big to happen for them that will magically lift them up, that will magically heal them, that will magically make them whole in their soul. Mm -hmm. I tell you again, they are like those who are waiting at the pool of Bethesda. They are like those who are waiting for the waters to be stirred up so that they could rush and jump into the pool. Now, as Jesus came to all those who were at the pool of Bethesda, I tell you today that he was sent to the great multitude of mankind that is our world today. Mm -hmm. A multitude that I want you to understand that is waiting to be healed. 
a multitude that I want you to understand that Jesus also asked the very same question that he asked a certain man. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the question that some of us may have here is why was Jesus asking mm -hmm. that question? Mm -hmm. Why did he ask the certain man that question? A man who he could see was impotent, a man who he could see was in need of healing. Why would Jesus ask him that question? And why does Jesus ask the world that question today? Why does he ask that question of mankind today? Mm -hmm. Now being someone that had an infirmity for the past five years. Right. I believe I can somewhat understand how that certain man may have felt upon hearing that question. Oh, yes. Yes. After only a few days of my infirmity, mm -hmm. I badly wanted out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you have ever gone through anything that was so bad that you just wanted out instantly. If someone had come up to me and asked me if I wanted to be made well after just a few days, mm -hmm. I would have looked at them like they were foolish. Of course I would want to be made well. Right. <laughs> Yet I would tell you that when you deal with something, when you go through something for such a long time, when you go through something for long enough, you can become used to what you're going through. All right. yeah. Yeah. You can grow used to being in that condition and you can start to accept mm -hmm. that that is your life. Yes. Yeah. That condition mm -hmm. being in that infirmity. Something that I find myself dealing with today is now having to adapt to my life to living after receiving my blessing from God yeah, yeah. to receiving my transplant. Mm -hmm. After living with my physical infirmity for the last five years, I can tell you that while I wanted to be healed and while I believed that I would be healed, there were days where it just seemed like it was never going to come. Yeah, yeah. There were days where it seemed like it was just not going to happen. I would tell you that I was hopeful. Yes. Yet at the same time, I was somewhat kind of hopeless. I don't know, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about today. I got you. I got you. So I can only imagine how this certain man must have felt after living with his infirmity for over 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. Considering it had been 38 years, I can only imagine the age of this man. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he had only lived 33 years of his life. He only ministered for three years. This man was 38 years into his infirmity. So I can only imagine that this must have been an older fellow. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm we don't even know how long this man may have been making that journey to the pool of Bethesda. Scripture doesn't tell us. We don't know how long the man had been visiting the pool of Bethesda seeking to be healed by the perceived healing waters of that pool. Scripture seems to indicate to us that it had been quite some time. After all, the man had a bed or he had a mat. He had something that he could lay on yeah. while he was resting, mm -hmm. waiting for the waters to be moved. So he knew that it would take some time for the waters to be moved. He, he understood very well. I believe that he had been making this journey to the pool for quite some time. If you're following me here today, mm -hmm. what scripture also makes quite clear to us is that the man while he would wait at the pool of Bethesda, he became very frustrated. Mm -hmm. I believe that this man was very frustrated with his visits to the pool of Bethesda. We see him tell Jesus there in the seventh verse. And again, I'm in the fifth chapter of John's gospel. We see him tell Jesus that when the waters did move, that he had nobody, mm -hmm. he had no man to put him into the pool and then we also see here 
that when the waters were moved and when he came to the waters as well, he tells Jesus that others would make it into the waters before he could. We're in the fifth chapter of John's gospel, auntie. Mm -hmm. So after all of this, after all of the waiting, after the frustration as well, mm -hmm. I believe that this man felt a bit hopeless yes, sir. about his infirmity. No. I believe he felt this way because he could never get into the pool. That's right. Even if he wanted to get into the pool, he could not get in. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I don't know if you have ever felt hopeless from an infirmity before. No. I don't know if you've ever felt the way that this certain man felt. Mm -hmm. I felt that way before. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you today that it is possible for one to have hope, but at the same time be hopeless as well. Yeah. It is possible for one to have hope, but at the same time, hopelessly wait for something to happen for them. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is easy to become hopeless while patiently sitting and waiting for something to happen for you. Yeah, yeah. This feeling that you may have felt before, I want you to understand that it is a feeling of defeat. Yeah, all right. And I tell you again that there are many people who are waiting for something to lift them up. They're waiting for something to magically happen for them. But while they are waiting, I tell you that there are many people who are in our world today that are defeated in their soul. They are defeated in their heart. But what I want you to pay very close attention here to with this certain man who had his infirmity for 38 years is that even though this man may have been frustrated, I want you to see that there was still a fire in this man's heart. Right. He wouldn't have been so frustrated if, if there was no fire in his heart to be healed. Mm -hmm. well. He wouldn't be upset with people jumping in front of him right. if there was no fire burning in his heart for him to be healed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This man, I believe he had a fire. I believe this man had a desire to be healed. And it seemed that that fire was burning fire. It was burning hot yeah. when yeah. Jesus came to him. That is why I believe that Jesus approached this certain man. Mm -hmm. The fire was burning in his soul to be healed of his infirmity. So I tell you today, I believe that Jesus asked this certain man this question. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made whole? I believe he asked it for a couple of reasons here. Mm -hmm. The first reason I believe Jesus asked him this question was to gauge whether or not this man was defeated in his heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to see if the man truly desired to be healed. Yeah. You see, a lot of times we can want something, mm -hmm. but not really want it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. All right. See, a lot of folks want something, but they won't go at it. Mm -hmm. They expect it to be handed to them. Mm -hmm. They expect to wait and for something to pop into existence for them. All right. All right. Jesus, again, wanted to see if this man truly wanted it. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see if this man truly desired to be healed of his infirmity. Again, I tell you that Jesus asked the question, the same question to all of us today. He asked the same question to all of mankind today. Do you want to be made whole? He asked us this question to gauge whether or not we truly want to be made well, whether or not we truly desire to be made whole in our soul today. You see, I tell you again, everybody is in need of healing, mm -hmm. but some of us don't truly desire to be healed of our infirmity. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm talking about a spiritual infirmity mm -hmm. here today. We either hopelessly wait for something that we don't truly believe will happen, or some of us just love sitting at the pool. Yeah, yeah. You see, some folks love going and sitting by the pool. I've been on vacation quite a bit in my life and the last few vacations that I had, 
people would go and they would sit at the pool first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Some folks love going and sitting down by the pool. To speak spiritually and not metaphorically here, I want you to understand today that there are some folks who love living in their sin and they don't desire to be healed right. of their infirmity, right. their spiritual infirmity. The second reason I believe that Jesus asked the man if he wanted to be made well was because he wanted to see if this man would take his eyes off the pool. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see if this man would take his eyes off of the water and turn his eyes to him. Yes, sir. He wanted to see if this man would turn his in attention to him. He wanted to see if this man would turn his heart to him. Yeah, yeah. And let us remember that the man and all of the other impotent ones, let us remember that they would focus intently on the waters to see if the waters would be stirred, to see if the waters would be moved so that they could go rushing into the water, trying to be first so that they could be healed of whatever it is that was ailing them. Yeah, yeah. So again, the question here is, could this man give up his hope in that magic for the true healing touch of certainty that would come from Christ. Right. Yeah. You see, yeah. Jesus, he did not need that pool, mm -hmm. nor was Jesus going to put that man into the waters. Right. According to the desire of his heart, Jesus was going to either heal that certain man, mm -hmm. he was either going to do it in that moment or he was going to move on to someone that truly desired to be healed. Yeah, yeah. You see, I believe Jesus desires to see if we truly desire him mm -hmm. or we, will we continue to desire something else in our world today. He desires to see if we will take our attention off of those things and turn our attention to the one who truly can make us feel better. Yeah, yeah. I truly believe that the Lord does not want to walk, want us to walk around in our infirmities. I truly believe that the Lord, our God wants to heal us of our infirmities. So again, I must ask the question, does your heart truly desire the Lord today? Do you truly desire to be made whole in your soul today? Now, I believe that Jesus determined that this man truly desired in his heart to be healed of his infirmity. I say this because we see here in the first of my key verses, which is the eighth verse here, we see that Jesus tells this man, rise. Mm -hmm. He tells him, take up your bed and walk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. According to this man's heart, this was his desire. Mm -hmm. And we see here that Jesus heals that man in that exact moment. Yeah. Notice here, Jesus doesn't even lay a hand on this man. That's right. He doesn't lay hands on the man. Mm -hmm. Jesus simply said the word rise is yeah. what Jesus said to him. Yeah. He said rise. Mm -hmm. This was a man who had been waiting by the pool to be healed for quite some time. Yes, and this man who it was believed could not walk, Jesus was commanding him yes. to rise, mm -hmm. take up his bed mm -hmm. and walk. All right, I hear you. Pay very close attention to the fact that the moment the man took his eyes off the pool mm -hmm. and turned his attention to Jesus. Wow. Mm -hmm. Pay close attention to that. In that moment, he was immediately healed. Do you yes. see that? He was immediately healed. He was immediately made whole. That is what we're told there in the second of my key verses in the ninth mm -hmm. verse there. You see, I believe that in that moment when Jesus told him to rise, told him to take up his bed and walk, I believe that he jumped up to his feet. I don't know if you hear me here today. I believe he jumped to his feet in that moment. And I believe that he rushed 
to take up his bed, and I believe that he walked, and he did not hesitate one second to do so. Yeah. See, I don't know if you've ever been made whole like that before. You see, he no longer needed that bed to lay in poolside. All right. He no longer needed that supposed magic of the healing powers of the pool to mm -hmm. heal him. Yeah. You see, that spot that he was laying in, it was no longer his resting place. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, that spot, I want you to hear again here today, because he had been made well, because he had been made whole, it was no longer his resting place. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been there before. I was confined to a chair for five years. It's no longer my resting place. I don't know if you've ever been made whole by the Lord before, but if you do, you ought to know that feeling. You ought to know what I'm talking about today. Yes, sir. Now, something that I want you to understand about this healing mm -hmm. was that this healing was not just a physical healing. It was a spiritual healing as well. Oh, yeah. I say this because we'll see Jesus say there in the 14th verse yeah. to the man, mm -hmm. he told him, you have been made well. Yeah. You have been made whole is what mm -hmm. Jesus said. Mm -hmm. He then told the man, sin no more is what Jesus told the man. Mm -hmm. Sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. Oh, yeah. In this microcosm, we see that Jesus did not come to the world just to heal us physically. Mm -hmm. He came to this world to make us whole. In order to make us whole, he must heal us in our spirit as well. Do you hear me here today? Mm -hmm. To those who heart desires to be made whole by him, to those who will turn their attention to him, mm -hmm. Jesus will heal instantly in that moment. Yeah, yeah. See, in that moment, Jesus will tell us that it is time to get up and at it. Yes. Huh? Get up, Jesus will tell us, and sin no more. Mm -hmm. He will say this to us because he has come and he has healed us of our infirmity. Oh, yeah. He has healed us of our sins. He has healed us of our spiritual infirmities. Mm -hmm. As it was time for the man to get up and do something productive, I tell you today that it is time for we who have been healed, it is time for us who have been healed to get up and to do something. Right. It is time for us to do something productive. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is the same thing my dad was trying to convey to me and my brother. It ain't time to lay in bed all day anymore. It's time for you to get up and get to work. It's time for you to do something that is productive. Mm -hmm. You see, when we turn our attention to the Lord and when we are healed, I tell you today that you should feel compelled. Yeah, yeah. You should feel compelled in your soul. You should feel compelled in your heart mm -hmm. to jump to your feet. Yeah, yeah. When, when the Lord tells you to rise, you should feel compelled to jump to your feet, mm -hmm. to take up your bed and to walk. Oh. You should feel compelled to get up and at it for the Lord. Let us not do as I do nowadays when my alarm go off in the morning. Let us not lay in the bed just a little bit longer. <laughs> All right. I want you to notice again that the man did not hesitate mm -hmm. to get moving when Jesus had made him whole. Yeah. Yeah. When the Lord tells us to rise and walk, mm -hmm. let us not hesitate to do so. Let us not lay around just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you believe Jesus healed the man so that he can continue to lay down by the pool no, and do nothing? No, mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Has he healed us so that we can continue to lay down by the pool? Mm -hmm. Certainly not. So for what purpose did Jesus heal the man of his infirmity? All right. 
For what purpose has Jesus healed us of our infirmities? Why has Jesus told us to rise, to take up our bed and to walk? Mm -hmm. Now we have seen that Jesus healed him because the man turned his attention to Jesus Mm -hmm. and that he truly desired to be made whole, that he truly desired to be healed in his heart of his infirmity. Mm -hmm. Yet I tell you, there was another important reason Mm -hmm. for this man to have been made whole. There's a very important reason for why Jesus, why the Lord has made us whole as well. I believe that there's a specific reason that Jesus told him to walk instead of continue to lay down by the pool. Mm -hmm. You see, this man was to be a testimony. This man was to be a living testimony Mm -hmm. of God, of God's grace Mm -hmm. and of God's power as well. Mm -hmm. We are told on the day that he was healed Mm -hmm. There in the 15th verse that this healed man went to the Jews Mm -hmm. and that he told the Jews something. We see that he told the Jews that it was who? It was Jesus that had did what? Made Made him well, made him whole. You see, this certain man became a living testimony of God, of God's grace and of God's power. The first thing that he did when he was made whole was go to the Jews and tell the Jews that it was Jesus that had healed him. It was Jesus that had made him well. It was Jesus that had made him whole. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This man walked for the Lord. He moved. He didn't stay laying down. He got to work. He did something that was productive. Mm -hmm. I want you to see today that this man ministered. Mm -hmm. This man ministered. He testified of what the Lord, he testified of what Jesus had done for him. I want to ask all of you this question today. Mm-hmm. When the Lord healed you of your infirmity, all right. what did you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've all been healed of infirmities mm-hmm. that was physical, mm-hmm. and we've all been healed of infirmities that are spiritual as well. All right. So I want to ask you the question. When he made you whole, did you rise? Right. Did you take up your bed and did you walk for the Lord? Did you testify what God had did for you? Why do you suppose Jesus said to us, rise, take up your bed and walk? Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus said that to us for the same exact reason he told this certain man to rise, to take up his bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Jesus has healed us of our infirmities so that we can be a testimony to all of those who are around us so that we could testify of God, his grace and testify of his power Mm -hmm. as well Mm -hmm. so that we could testify to all those that we know Mm -hmm. to all of those that we do not know. We are to be a living testimony Mm -hmm. to both those we know and those who are strangers to us. Mm -hmm. We are to be a living testimony to saints and sinners as well. We are to be a living testimony of God. Mm -hmm. We must understand that while we have turned our attention to the Lord, Mm -hmm. while we have turned our focus to the Lord, while we have turned our hearts to the Lord, there's still a great multitude of impotent ones that is waiting by the pool of Bethesda today. There's still a great multitude of people that are waiting for help Mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for something to happen that will lift them up, Mm -hmm. that will heal them. Mm -hmm. And I tell you today, our testimony is powerful. Mm -hmm. Your testimony is powerful. Our testimony is something that can help them. It is something that can lift them up. It is something that can encourage them to turn their attention, 
to turn their hearts to the certain one, the true one, the one who is the true healer. It can cause them to turn their eyes to the Lord who asked them, do you desire to be made whole? Mm -hmm. The one who can make them well, the one who can make them whole. Yeah. Our true healer, that is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Instead of them listening to the Lord and listen to, listening to the other beliefs that are of this world, mm -hmm. seeking for some kind of magical portion that will, will help them, we can testify of the truth. Yeah. We can testify of what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. That is what we ought to do as a child of God, as a saint. We ought to be a living testimony mm -hmm. of the work that God has worked in us, yeah. all that God has done for us. We ought to testify of that to somebody. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right on. Yeah. In his letter to the Philippians, <laughs> Paul wrote that the things which happened to him actually work for the furtherance, mm -hmm. Paul said, of the gospel. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All that he had went through in yeah. his life, yeah. his conversion, mm -hmm. the arrest, yeah. Paul said that it worked to the furtherance of the gospel, mm -hmm. his afflictions, his infirmities. Yeah. Yeah. Paul said that it worked to the furtherance yes, sir. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel, not, 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 not something that he had made up, right. but the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel yeah. of God. Yeah. Okay. I tell you today, all that you have gone through, all that we have gone through in our afflictions, mm -hmm. in our infirmities, while we have been on this journey that is our life, I tell you that they have all come together to work for good. Mm -hmm. They have all come together to work to the furtherance mm -hmm. of the gospel of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, we are able to minister of the death and the resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are able to minister the gospel of Christ through our testimonies. Mm -hmm. well, well. But we are also able to testify of what God has personally done for us. Yeah. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Both are very powerful and both are very useful to all of those who are around us. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, something happens to hold some of us back from doing so. Well. It is either personal or it is something else. Right. Something happens and we'll see here in scripture today that something happened to this certain man immediately after he was healed. Yeah, yeah. See something have something that happens to us when we get up and, and add it for the Lord is that we often face attempts to hinder us in our walk. Mm -hmm. and this can come from the physical world. Yes. This can come from the spiritual world as well. Just take a look here at what happened to the man. As soon as he was healed, as soon as he got up, as soon as he started walking with his bed, yeah. we're told there in the 10th verse that the Jews, the religious leaders approached a man that was healed and they said to him, it is the Sabbath. They said to him, it is not lawful. All right. Got it. They was basically saying it ain't right. Yes. They said it is not lawful for you to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It ain't lawful for you to, to be up and carrying your bed is That's what right. is what they said to this man. Mm -hmm. Again, they said this to a man who had just been healed. Well, How disgusting is that? <laughs> to say, oh, this man, yeah, hey, you doing something wrong. Yes, sir. That ain't lawful. Mm -hmm. Not today. <laughs> that should have been great rejoicing here, Unc. Yes, sir. 
they, they should have been rejoicing at this man being healed of his infirmity. Mm-hmm. When, when, when someone in our world is healed of, of their infirmity, we shouldn't be scowling at them. We should be rejoicing for them. They was accusing this man of sin is what they was doing. They was accusing this man of sinning after he had just been told by the Lord in the flesh what he was supposed to be doing. Do you see that? There? Jesus told him to rise, take up his bed and walk. And here these men come along the way telling this man that he done did wrong and that he done sin. Let us understand that they were trying to deter him in his walk for the Lord. I tell you today that there are many who will attempt to deter you from getting up and walking for the Lord. They will try to, in other words, hinder you from walking for the Lord. Some of those that will try to deter you in your walk will be some of those that are still waiting by the pool. You see, again, I tell you, some enjoy their time at the pool. They love sitting at the pool. (laughs) They are their first thing in the morning, and some of them don't even leave. (laughs) You have heard me say it before. There's a great multitude in our world that is happy and content living in their sin. (laughs) Being sick, sick spiritually, It does not seem to bother them as they continue to live by the hopes and wishes of the world, waiting Mm -hmm. for the world to produce something for them. So they believe you're ruining their enjoyment of sitting at the pool with your getting up and moving around and talking, Mm -hmm. testifying. They believe that you are ruining their enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So they set the rules and say to you what you can and what you cannot do by the pool. They tell you, take that somewhere else. (laughs) Walking and running for the Lord is frowned upon at the pool. Again, the pool is representative of the world today. I tell you today that we cannot let our walk, we cannot let our testimony of what the Lord has done for us, we cannot let it be hindered. We cannot let it be deterred. Our response should be just like the man who was healed. You'll see his response there in the 11th verse. In closing, I want to share his response with you. He he responded to those that would hinder him. He who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. The he that said that to him was the one who healed him. The one who healed him was Jesus Christ. The same one who has healed all of us today. So to anyone who would attempt to deter me, And to anyone who will attempt to deter you on your journey of faith, when you are walking for the Lord, let us come together and say to all of them, he who made me well told me to rise, told me to take up my bed and told me to walk. Let that be our response. He who made me well told me to get up and at it. Let us get up and add it for the Lord. Will you get up and add it for the Lord today? Will you get up and add it? Will you walk for the Lord today? I hope your response to that question is a yes. Amen. 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 Amen.